Happy New Year, and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church Champaign. I don't know about you, but frankly, I'm pretty glad to have 2020 behind us and look forward to the promises of this new year. As is our custom in the first Sunday of worship, we celebrate communion. So please have a bit of cracker or bread, uh, some juice or even a little bit of wine to celebrate communion with us at the end of our service. Joining with me this morning are Rachel and Matt Matthews, who will be joining in our call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. We, we are, are called, called out of, of our, our darkness, darkness into, into light. light. Lift up your eyes and look around. We, we rejoice in the gift of light. Come, let us worship the God of light and joy and peace. We, we come, come to kneel at the cradle, cradle of the babe, the light, light incarnate. incarnate. Good morning. As we continue to celebrate the Christmas season, please join in singing Angels from the Realms of Glory. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. You who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, you have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. All creation join in praising God the Father, Spirit, Son. Evermore your voice is raising to the eternal three in one. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn. Why do we huddle in the shadowed corners of life rather than running to the light of life? Why do we love the wrong we do rather than grasping the good news offered to us? Let us speak to God of all we have failed to do, seeking hope and grace as we pray. Join with me in our prayer of confession. Ever patient, patient God, God we, we are a people, people who live in, in thick, thick darkness. darkness. We, we stumble, stumble around, bombarded by news of war and poverty, famine and genocide, injustice and oppression, the maelstrom of things and issues and people of the dark can overwhelm and paralyze us. Help us to be people of the light, shining your light of righteousness, peace, and joy into all the dark places of our lives and world. 
Unlock the mystery and glory of the babe born in Bethlehem. Turn our aimless wanderings into a journey of purpose guided by your star. Let the light break into our lives and our world and transform us into people of light. As certainly as the dawn follows the night, so is the promise of God's forgiveness and love for all of us. Arise and shine, O people of faith. Follow that star. Find the light of the world born in Bethlehem and be transformed from darkness to light. Amen. Amen. Friends, believe the gospel in Jesus Christ. We are God's forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you.
Hey, Pastor Matt. Hey, Jip. How's it going? It's going good. What's up? Uh, the ceiling's up. <laughs> You're funny. The sky's above the ceiling. Well, yeah, but I know what's happening. What's happening? Um, worship is happening. We're visiting. Um, it's, a, it's a new year. We're celebrating a new year. Oh, yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too, brother. I hope it'll be better than last year. Well, I think every year has blessings and beauty, and even in hardship, we can see the blessings and the beauty, but we have to look. Uh, but you're right. Last year, 2020, was hard for lots of reasons. Um, certainly the pandemic is one of them. And we're not out of it yet, but we are moving that way, aren't we? Yeah, there's hope. There's a vaccine. There's a vaccine, and we, we hope to, we hope to be... Um, moving to a place where we don't have to wear masks and we, we don't have to socially distance and people will be well and the, the pandemic will be over. Soon, we hope. <laughs> and we can seek out the hope and the joy and the things that we can celebrate in the meantime and the things that we have and, and take comfort in that. And today's story actually talks about seeking as well. It does? Yep. It's about some guys that came a long way seeking the new king of the Jews. They didn't really know who Jesus was yet, but they knew that they wanted to find him. And they followed a star to do it. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. The wise guys. <laughs> the the <laughs> wise guys. Or... <laughs> Not wise guys, but you're, yeah, you got the right idea. Wise men, we usually call them. Oh, yeah, they're in the, the nativity set, and they've got the gifts and the fancy clothes. Yeah. Yeah, that's them. And they came seeking Christ. And they went to King Herod, and they asked him if he knew where to find him. And did he help them? Well, yeah, he asked the prophets, who were really knowledgeable, if they could give him an answer of what town to go to. How did they know? Well, they looked in the Old Testament, as we call it, and the prophet Micah had words about it. And he told them the answer was Bethlehem. So then they went there? Yeah, then they went there. And did they find Jesus? Yes, they did. Yeah. Wow, that was a long journey, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> it was. But you know, wise people, or wise guys, seek Jesus still. Yeah, they do. But didn't we find him? Well, yeah, but I mean in terms of seeking Jesus to be present in our lives, to really seek out and follow what Jesus says we should do. That's the kind of seeking I mean. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, Jip, when I study my Bible, I'm always looking for Jesus. If I'm in the book of Ruth, I'm looking for Jesus. If I'm in the book of Genesis, I'm looking for Jesus. If I'm in the book of John, I'm looking for Jesus. Um, I'm always paying attention and seeking um, uh, the grace and the love of God and Jesus Christ everywhere I look and everything I do, all the people I visit, all of the items and matters I pray over, I'm always seeking Jesus. Not a very wise man, not a very wise person, but they were looking, and boy, so am I. You should be looking too. We can look together, okay? Okay. You know, when you're seeking something, how do you find it? Do you ask directions? Uh, I use Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Google Maps is pretty helpful for something like that, but they didn't have Google Maps. So if you don't have something <laughs> like that, how do you find something? Well, I guess I ask for directions from somebody I trust. Yeah, and that's a good way to seek Jesus, too. Ask questions of the people you trust that know Jesus well, and they'll help you find him, especially when you feel lost. Okay. Can I ask you, Pastor Matt, if I get lost? You can. Can I ask you if I get lost? Sure. Okay. It's nice to have another friend in the faith. It's nice to have a faith family that we both can count on. Amen? Let's pray about that. Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us the way to find God. Help us to keep seeking if we get lost on the way. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jim. You know, one of the, the ways we stay focused and the, one of the ways we find Jesus in our path is by the participation in spiritual disciplines. Among them, of course, are worship and prayer and service. 
but also the gifts, uh, uh, the, the spiritual gift of giving gifts. During this time of our offering, we all pause for a moment just to think of what we have that we can give. Certainly our money, our stocks, our treasure, yes, but also of our hearts, of our mind, of our gifts of creativity and love. How can we give those? How can we live in such a way that our whole life is a gift? That's one way we find Jesus, by, by living into and deepening our walk with these spiritual disciplines of, of prayer, of worship, of service, of, of gift giving, of, um, of writing, of, of music, of, of a keen attention to business, whatever it is God has gifted you to do. To think of it as a spiritual discipline that draws you closer to God, deepens your journey, and makes your whole life open to the transforming power of God's Spirit to enrich the whole wide world. So let us remember to be generous in our offerings of treasure uh, and let that remind us of all that we have to offer beyond our treasure. May we pray together? Oh God, I give you thanks for these reminders, for this plate that's heavy in my hand, that we will all pass soon enough face to face. Use the gifts we give this day to bear light and hope and love to your world and use our very lives, transform what we do and how we offer ourselves in service to you. For we ask it in the name of Jesus the Christ and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Bonjour, mes frères et sœurs. Aujourd'hui, nous allons lire dans le livre de Matthieu, chapitre 1er, 1er au 12e verset. Jésus naquit à Bethléem en Judée, à l'époque du roi Hérode. Or, les mages venus d'Orient arrivèrent à Jérusalem et dirent Où est le roi des Juifs qui vient de naître En effet, nous avons vu son étoile en Orient et nous sommes venus pour l'adorer. Quand le roi Hérode apprit cela, il fut troublé et tout Jérusalem avec lui. Il rassembla tous les chefs des prêtres et spécialistes de la loi et comptait le peuple et leur demanda où le Messie devait naître. Il lui dit à Bethléem en Judée, car voici ce qui a été écrit par le prophète. Et toi, Bethléem, père de Juda, il ne cherche pas la plus petite parmi les principales villes de Juda. Car de toi sortira un chef qui prendra soin d'Israël, mon peuple. Alors Hérode fit appeler en secret les, les mages. Il s'informa soigneusement auprès d'eux du moment où l'étoile était à Paris. Puis il les envoya à Bethléem en disant Allez prendre des informations exactes sur le petit enfant. Quand vous l'aurez trouvé, faites-le-moi savoir afin que j'aille moi aussi l'adorer. Après avoir attendu le roi, ils partirent. Les trois qu'ils avaient vus en Orient allaient devant eux jusqu'au moment où, arrivé au-dessus de l'endroit où était le petit enfant, elle s'arrêta. Quand ils aperçurent les trois, ils furent remplis d'une très grande joie. Ils entrèrent dans la maison vers le petit enfant avec Marie, sa mère, ses prosténaires et la dehors. Ensuite, ils ouvrirent le trésor et lui, et lui offrir un cadeau de l'or, de l'essence et de la mire. Puis, averti dans un, dans, dans un rêve de ne pas retourner vers Hérode, ils gagnèrent leur pays par un autre chemin. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. I invite you to listen for God's word for you. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As most of you know, I am a big fan of technology, using it in most aspects of my life. One way that I like to use technology is in navigation. The invention of the GPS has had a profound impact on my life. I use my phone on an appropriate dash mount to, to navigate even around town. I like to see the context of my route as I travel. One of my children will sometimes ask me, Dad, do you know where you're going? When I respond with yes, she will ask why it is that I'm using my phone to navigate then. The ulterior motive is that she wants to play Pokemon Go on my phone rather than me using it for navigation. Sometimes I relent. Today is the Sunday we celebrate the Epiphany with this reading from Matthew, the only gospel to recount the story of the first manifestation of Jesus to the Gentiles. Matthew 2 tells us about the Magi who traveled quite some distance to meet the one born king of the Jews. Matthew doesn't say exactly where they came from, saying only they were wise men from the east. But most scholars agree they were probably from Persia. A trip from Persia to Jerusalem was over 1,000 miles and took many months by camel. Most of us likely know that the traditional representation of the wise men at the nativity scene with the newborn Jesus is not quite correct. The wise men probably arrived to visit Jesus when he was between one and two years old. Some do their part to correct this traditional inaccuracy by setting up the nativity scene in their homes with the wise men set across the room. Starting on Christmas Day, they then gradually move the wise men little by lip, little across the room until they arrive on January 6th, Epiphany Day. In the biblical story, the wise men make this journey of over 1,000 miles simply following a star. They had no GPS or navigation system. They didn't even know what their destination was exactly, only following this mysterious star in the sky. They likely had a good guess about where to go, though. They were headed for Jerusalem. A reasonable theory of where the Messiah would be it was a large and powerful city of Israel with a long history among the Jewish people. That seems like a logical place for the Messiah to be. But it wasn't where Jesus was to be found. The wise men arrived in Jerusalem and asked to see the child-born king of the Jews. King Herod heard about this visit, too. When people start coming from far away to worship a new king, the current king gets a bit worried. So Heather, Herod gathered everyone around, and they eventually realized that Micah 5 tells them where to find Jesus. From you, O Bethlehem of, Je of Ephrathah, shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. They were off by a few miles in Jerusalem. Bethlehem sits just five miles south. So the wise men then leave for Bethlehem and they see the star again. The star leads them better than my GPS ever could right to the house where Jesus was. Matthew tells us they were overwhelmed with joy. Then they enter the house, bow before Jesus and give him the strangest of gifts. What is the poor carpenter's family to do with gold, frankincense, and myrrh? What are those gifts anyway? Well, the gifts had intrinsic worth and symbolic meaning. Gold we can understand, and it represented Jesus' kingship, not as an earthly king, but as a heavenly king. Frankincense was used by priests in anointing people during religious rites, so it represented Jesus' role as a priest, as the intermediary between us and God. Finally, myrrh has a cheerless role to play, it was used for embalming the dead, and it represented Jesus' earthly death as a sacrifice for all of humanity. 
So these gifts have symbolic worth and monetary value, though they were likely not of much immediate use to Jesus' family. A cartoon has the caption, Fortunately, three wise women came by later. And has Mary saying, diapers, receiving blankets, and an infant mule seat? Now those I can use. The wise men, though, traveled for quite a distance to lay down before Jesus gifts that he could scarcely use. It all seems a bit strange. Why would they give God's promised one gifts such as these? The author of short stories, O. Henry, has an answer for us, though it too seems puzzling at first. O. Henry's classic story, The Gift of the Magi, was published in 1906, and it tells the story that many of us know well. Jim and Della Young are a married couple who are very much in love, but they can barely afford even their one-room apartment. Though they are incredibly poor, they have two possessions that they treasure very much. Della has her beautiful, long-flowing hair. Her hair is said to be so beautiful that if the Queen of Sheba lived nearby, Della could depreciate the Queen's jewels just by hanging her hair out the window. And Jim owned a watch that had been his father's and his grandfather's. Jim's watch is said to be so magnificent that if King Solomon walked by, Jim could make him envious just by pulling out his watch. They had these two wonderful possessions, but very little else, and no money with which to buy Christmas presents. Della longs to buy something for Jim, and so she decides to cut off and sell her hair to have money for Jim's Christmas present. She then sees something that as soon as she sees it, she knows that it must be Jim's. It is a nice chain for Jim's pocket watch, which she buys and takes home, where she attempts to do something with what is left of her hair. Jim comes home from work and looks at Della with an expression that she cannot read. She runs to him and tells him what she has done, but he doesn't seem to be able to get past the fact that she has cut off her hair. He gives her a present which explains his reaction. It is a set of expensive and beautiful combs made of pure tortoise shell with jeweled rims. She had yearned for with hope, without hope of ever having these very combs in a store window. They were perfect for her hair, which was now gone. Stella then gave Jim his present, the wonderful chain for his prized watch. She wanted to put it on his watch immediately, but Jim sat down on the couch instead and explained that he had sold his cherished watch to get the money to buy her combs. They've each sold their prized possession to get a present for their beloved, and those presents are not usable because the prized possessions are now gone. It seems like such a depressing story. It seems so wasteful and futile. These two long to do something wonderful for each other, and their gifts end up being useless. Oh, Henry says that he has told the tale of a couple who most unwisely sacrifice for each other the greatest treasures of their home. And yet, O. Henry then praises them. He praises their sacrifice, saying, A last word to the wise of these days. Let it be said that of all who gives gifts, who give gifts, these two were the wisest. All who give and receive gifts such as they are wisest. Everywhere they are wisest. They are the magi. You see, it was not the actual possessions that mattered in the end. It was the unselfish love that each showed for the other. Their shared love is greater than any of their possessions could ever be. And so it may be with the gifts that the wise men brought to Jesus. Perhaps they didn't have much practical use, but their significance was meaningful. Perhaps a carpenter's family had little use for these gifts, but the love and honor shown by giving them was the point. Oh, Henry's story has been adapted and retold from Mickey Mouse trading his harmonica to buy a necklace for Minnie Mouse locket while Minnie trades in her locket to buy a case for Mickey's harmonica to a young auto mechanic who is gradually buying his own tools, selling those tools to buy a chest for his wife's quilt, which was a gift from her late mother, while she sells the quilt to buy a toolbox for her husband's now gone tools. The story has resonance and meaning for us as it shows us of the true meaning of self-sacrificing love. The wise men sacrificed traveling a long, long way to lay their valuable gifts before the feet of a little child who would be king. Their example invites us to do the same. O. Henry's story, too, reminds us about self-sacrificial love. 
we're called to show that same kind of love and worship for our King, Jesus Christ. And giving that gift will change us. The account in Matthew tells us that after giving their gifts to Jesus, the wise men left for their own country by another road. Another translation says they departed for their own country another way. I know this is talking about taking a different road to get home, but I think that the Magi were not the same as they were before. I think that they went home another way as changed people. The earthly church father, Gregory the Great, said, having come to know Jesus, we are forbidden to return the way we came. In this new year, with great possibilities, let us come before our king and lay down before him the sacrificial gifts of our lives. And then we will never be the same, returning home another way. Thanks be to God. Amen. We saw a star and followed it from the east. We've come so far to get here. We held one home that we might find a king. How could we know that he would be God with us, Emmanuel, come to us, the King of Israel abides with us in this little Eternal One, born in due time, this baby child is God with us. Frankincense and myrrh. When riches untold he left behind, we brought our best to celebrate a king who'd left his throne so he could be God with us. Emmanuel. of Israel abides with us in this little boy who could know we'd find mortal and mystery somehow intertwined this baby child is
baby child is God. God we This morning we gather at the table of our Lord for communion, the sacrifice of our Lord for us, reminding us of the sacrifice that we lay out before his feet. We have come seeking changed lives, seeking joy that might satisfy our thirst, wandering through the darkness. There is something here that will satisfy our hunger. No matter how long we have wandered, here our hearts arise. Our light has come. In this bread and in this cup, we celebrate something we can't quite understand because God has made a home for us at this table, because God satisfies our hunger in the most unlikely places, because God comes to be with us now and always. It is with this expectation that we come to the table to taste and see that God is good. Please join me now in a time of prayer. We have traveled different roads than we expected this year, God of Epiphany. Yet we have all been led to this table where you send down your spirit upon the gifts of life and grace and all who have gathered wherever they are. Hope was broken on the cross, but like this bread, it gives us the strength to travel different roads as we seek justice for those who have none, as we, seek, as we challenge power to listen to the voiceless, as we stand with those who are cast aside. Grace was poured out in resurrection love and through the gift of this cup, it refreshes us so that we can go down different roads to share meals with strangers in our neighborhoods, to welcome the lonely as close family, to continue for now to distance ourselves so that one day we can embrace each other again. And when our different roads lead us to you, gathered around your feast of love with all we have missed and lost, all who have been ignored and dismissed, all our siblings from every time and from every place, we will join in songs of praise to you, God and community, holy and one, praying together the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this table extends to your home, to your table, whatever your table may be. And it is the table of our Lord. Our Lord invites all to join in this feast. Scripture tells us that on the night of his arrest, our Lord was at table with his disciples. And after supper, he took the bread. He broke it. He gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and poured it out, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. So friends, whenever we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, as you have fed us at your table, send us forth to to feed your children wherever we may find them. Send us home another way. 
We pray in the name of the Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn today is called as partners in Christ's service. Please pay attention especially to the words. That is, after all, what the hymn is. And these words are particularly pertinent to our life right now in the time of COVID pandemic and justice, the seeking of justice for all people. Called as partners in Christ's service, called to ministries of grace, we respond with deep commitment, fresh new lines of faith to trace. We may learn the art of sharing side by side and friend with friend, equal partners in our caring to fulfill God's chosen end. Christ's example, Christ inspiring, Christ's clear call to work and worth. Let us follow, never faltering, reconciling folk on earth. Men and women, richer, poorer, all God's people, young and old, blending human skills together, gracious gifts from God unfold. Thus new patterns for Christ's mission in a small or global sense. Help us bear each other's burdens, breaking down each wall of fence. Merits of comfort, words of vision, words of challenge said with care. Bring new power and strength for action. Make us colleagues free and fair. So God grant us for tomorrow ways to order human life that surround each person's sorrow with a calm that conquers strife. Make us partners in our living, our compassion to increase. Messengers of faith thus giving hope and confidence and peace. Friends, go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord, laying the gifts of your lives at the feet of our King. Let God's people say, Amen.